Hello, everyone. This is Amy of AJC Magic TV. I welcome you in today. I know I'm early. Um, I decided I needed to go a little bit early um, because I am going to an event here after I'm done with my youth group. They've been doing their um, mission trip at home called ASP at Home. Hello, Candy Mom. Welcome in. And I want to go join them for the evening program. Hello, Richard, the Orlando guy. Thank you for joining. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, so I welcome everyone in. I'll be talking about my trip to Orlando. Yes, I'm back home. But the weather was a little bit surprising, cooler here in Pennsylvania. But I'm guessing because all the storms that happened on Monday kind of came in and brought in a little cool front area. Um, but don't worry, Richard, one of these days I will sit outside Casey's Corner and uh, do some Disney trivia like I did at Hollywood Studios the one day I was there and you were in the chat. So welcome in. I do appreciate you stopping into my um, live streams and I do appreciate everyone who came into my live streams when I was live. I know I didn't go live as much as I would have liked to. I was just trying to get comfortable with the gimbal. That was the first time I used my gimbal in the parks and also trying to get used to being on rides, holding my phone and the gimbal and different things. So I do have videos I'll be dropping. I did some shorts that I dropped while I was there and just trying to mix and match some different um, videos once I get it going. Welcome in Francisco, welcome in Russ. Thank you for joining. And um, I do appreciate everyone dropping in. Um, I know this is T. Marie's place, but she is, had to cancel this evening. And I asked her if, I, if she didn't mind if I went a little earlier. So I do appreciate it. And I do appreciate everyone coming in. I was going to share some of the merchandise that I've gotten. Um, I know if you are interested, um, I do have pins and, or buttons. Um, you can always Instagram me your address. Um, I will get them sent out. I do have a few people who I do have addresses for. And um, I will be sending them out. So if you like to have a button, I do have a bigger size. So if I run out of the smaller size, I will be gladly give you one of the bigger sizes, or if you're lucky enough, you'll get one of these. I know some of you gotten them in person um, whenever I got to meet you. So, welcome in. And um, my name is Amy of AJC Magic TV. <clears throat> and um, yes, Candy Mom, just IG me your address and I will um, send it out. Welcome in, wonderful world of Walter's dad, Mark. Welcome in. <clears throat> Just I, Jimmy, your address. That would be, um, and I will get those out. I do have a couple other people that I have their addresses for, and I will be getting them out as soon as possible. <clears throat> so I'm just waiting to see if any more people come in. Um, I may do some trivia after we're done, but we'll go ahead and get started. I'll wait till I get one in person. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll, I will be carrying them around the park. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet you, Russ. Um, I was planning on it. and Just time actually got away from me like this whole trip because I know even on Monday, uh, by the time I left the Magic Kingdom and, I, and got the um, Disney Springs, it was like, wow, what time is it? And how quickly the time flew. And especially the day I was at Hollywood Studios. And after I rode Rise, I looked at my watch and it was like, wow, I got to get going here. <laughs> but, um, but we'll get started with some of the merchandise and I will talk about, ah, thank you, Candy Mom, for the, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's true, Russ. A, a, Kind of, I did have some little bit of downtime. Um, it, I will say it was very hot um, and humid. The, like when I started out in the morning, it wasn't too bad. 
and it felt like it was going to rain and a little cooler and then all of a sudden that heat wave picked up candy mom thank you for the super chat um it will go um to good use for the postage and everything like that for the channel um super chats are not expected but it's always appreciated i just use the money towards our channel and to help us do better with it so thank you very much candy mom but um I did. Um, I had the trip already kind of planned out. I kind of wish I would have went a little bit longer and I'm talking about arriving earlier um, because then I would have met um, Saul Ross and Lisa, Keith and Joey and a couple other people. Um, I was trying to do that at, at one point, but just different life things were going on that particular weekend. Um, some graduation parties and and some other things going on and getting ready to go um, to on the trip. And I actually had it planned. Um, I did let Jeff and Ange know that I possibly would be coming um, because I did know that Tracy, Billy, Kenzie, and Matt would be down there still. And um, so I was just looking for um, whether I was gonna get there Wednesday or Thursday. Um, it worked out better for me to arrive Thursday just getting everything together and finishing up the work week and stuff. But I did arrive on Thursday um, and it, um, I took an early morning flight from Pittsburgh um, down to Orlando nonstop. Um, it wasn't too bad getting out of the airport when I got to the luggage claim, got my luggage, um, had, to, um, had to walk um, over to the B side of it. It would be nice. It, they used to do Magical Express on both sides, but I'm sure for their economics and since they are going to be, and that has quit a long time ago, but um, <clears throat> it would be, it would have been nice if it would have been on the A side because it seemed like even all the car rentals and everything were on the A side when you walked over to the B side. The only thing that was actually happening there, if you had ride shares or Magical Express, so just so you know, like if you are going to the airport and depending on when, if and when a lot of the car rentals open back up, um, they were open on the A side, but they weren't open on the B side. Um, so just so you know that, um, and if you fly Southwest, you're on the A side there. I did look into renting a car and, um, it was really a cost of almost one night at a deluxe resort. And I thought, gee, if I'm going to rent that car for that, for that high amount, I might as well go camp somewhere and sleep in the car the whole week. What humidity? I don't take showers anymore. I just walk out on my deck and soak up the air. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, yeah, they sent me multiple emails that cars are, only on a side which we are coming in so yeah all you, all you would do once you get your um your luggage and everything you'll just go right downstairs mark pack your umbrella and wet clothes it's been raining every day summer is here yes um i got lucky for my trip uh, uh it drizzled one night and then the day i was leaving right before i got onto the magical express to go back to the airport the skies opened up which then caused a lot of Orlando traffic because it's kind of like a snowstorm here in Pittsburgh where everybody doesn't know how to drive all of a sudden and they don't know how to drive all of a sudden in a rainstorm, but rain really does come down pretty hard there and everything. Welcome in, Anthony Manzano. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> um, I usually do use a radar app sometimes, Candy Mom. So, um, Um, so I, I could look, but there were sometimes like other people around me were like, oh, a storm will be coming soon or, or, or you could just see with the sky. So it wasn't too bad. I did have an umbrella. Um, an umbrella also helps if, um, keeping the sun off of you too, at times, especially if you want to try to stream or even just walking around in general. Um, I didn't use it for that. I had a hat pretty much and um, sunglasses and try to stick, like walk through the buildings of 
like hood or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say there's times that even if you have an umbrella and a poncho, you end up soaked somewhere on your feet are soaked or your legs are soaked or or whatever. It just goes pretty quickly. <clears throat> but I arrived Thursday morning. Um I got my luggage pretty quick, got over to to the other side, the Magical Express, and they actually had a bus waiting for for those particular stops. And since there's only so many resorts open, um, they took people to Art of Animation, Pop Century, then Coronado, and All Star Movies were all on there just because it wasn't busy at that point at the Magical Express area. So they kind of combined everyone, and luckily. Coming from the airport, um, Art of Animation and Pop Century are right there off of the Osceola Parkway. So that was the first stop. So I didn't have to go riding around the property to get on there. We stopped at Art of Animation. They took the inside road loop over to Pop Century, got on. By the time I got off the Magical Express, my room was ready. So I just went straight to my room and, <clears throat> and got in and... The ironic thing is, is I put in a request. They asked if I wanted, when I was checking in online, 70s or 50s building, I put in the 70s building. I usually like the ground floor just because um, it, it's less walking and you just walk out and you're on the sidewalk and you can just get going. Um, and I was actually two doors down from a room that I had the last trip that I actually was in Disney. So that was really interesting. Because I was only two doors down from the last time I was at Disney, that room right there in the 70s section at Pop Century. Um, and I actually checked in when I um, was on the airplane. Um, and the room was ready. So, and <clears throat> I was right outside the big wheel across from the giant Mickey phone area. So that, so I had a courtyard, more courtyard view room, and it was ready. The only thing that I had, I did, luckily I did grab my magic bands because I almost forgot my magic bands. Welcome in, Garrett, Monarch Moments, or Michelle, and hello, Gabe and Hannah. Um, <clears throat> so um, luckily I had my magic band because it said, oh, you can open your door with your phone. I have an Apple phone. I hit that, lined up everything, and it went open. It went open. So I finally, um, I'm like, oh, good thing I had my magic band. The magic band I had was the one that was connected to everything, and it worked. Um, Mark, I, let's see, I landed in Orlando. I was at the resort by about 830-ish. So it, it was, I can look real quick here. I'll let you know what time I got the text. Yeah, if you know you're definitely going to um, check in right away, um, I would suggest doing it um, I would suggest doing it before you actually get on the bus and everything. Yeah, I, I, with my phone, it never worked. Um, according to my phone, um, we were at 7.30 at, yeah, at 7.30 because I was on the plane when we um, landed about 7.30ish in Orlando. They got my thing at a, probably about, um, by 8 o'clock, by the time I got to the resort, by 8 o'clock, 8.30, my room was ready. So that was it. Um, I would say if you're going to do the pre-check-in, Put maybe I put my landing time on of what time I was going to arrive because I really didn't have a problem if it wasn't going to be ready because I was just going to drop my luggage off anyway. I I was hoping that they would have a room ready, so I would put in a time that you think maybe when you're going to get on get in your car and go, um, whatever time you land, put that time in because you never know it, it may be ready, it may not but maybe they'll be working on it. I'm not sure where you guys are staying. Um, sometimes I, I don't know how the um, like DVC resorts, how quickly, but it would all depend on when people leave and different things like that too. 
we fly in the night before and just have a burner room off site. They're cheap. So yeah, I would put down whatever time you think you're going to get up in the morning, put in, hey, if you're going to wake up at 6, 7.30 a.m., put that time, maybe put 8 o'clock at 8 a.m. and knowing that, okay, we're going to check in, we'll leave our luggage at the resort if we have to, but it does help to do that. It helps to go to the front desk to get a room earlier too, rather than wait for the, yes, it does for us. Um, I figured if I didn't get the notification and like I said, I, I pretty much checked in last minute. I was landing on the plane, like on that, you know, when they let us, you know, say, Hey, once you land, you could start using your cell phones. Cause I really didn't think about it. Cause I thought, Oh, I'll just go to the front desk and ask them, do you have any room ready? That's what I would have probably done just because I kind of wanted to get my luggage settled and everything like that. Welcome in, John Surfbaum. Thank you for joining. So, yeah, I I would just put in an indication that, hey, we may be uh, possibly checking in earlier. I know DVC sometimes that's 3 or 4 p.m. I know 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. is usually the resort rooms, they'll say. But, yeah, I got the text pretty quick that my room was ready. Um, the only drawback that I had... And, they did ask if you wanted that towel service and stuff. And I said, yes. And unfortunately I never got that service. Um, and only because the one time when she did show up, I was back at the room and I was like, I thought maybe they would have came a little earlier when they were doing the other rooms in the area. If people checked out or whatever. And since I was there in the room, all she did was, um, say, do you need anything? And I asked for a couple of extra towels and some other things, towels and washcloths. And basically whoever was cleaning my room ended up with a pile of towels to be taken out of my room because they never came. Um, I usually stick to one using one garbage can most of the time during the trip. So that way they're not having to worry about cleaning out all the garbage cans. Um, and I use the recycle one for plastic items. But other than that, um, but they would have just had a ton of towels on the ground. I, I do try to use them over, but um, with the humidity and that cool air in your room, they never really dried off and stuff anyway. So um, just had a pile of towels there. <laughs> but, um, you know, so but they were nice enough to bring other towels and washcloths and stuff. So that was um, nice with that. I didn't need to worry about the bed made or anything like that. So. I, once I dropped my luggage off, changed my clothes because I wore jeans down because I will say um, at least my airplane was kept cool. The airports were cool. Um, and when I left Pittsburgh the at three, you know, it was four in the morning. Um, the air here was not warm. So wearing shorts, I just wasn't ready for that. And then once I did get to Orlando and got to the resort, it was like, okay, I'm glad the room was ready. I needed the change my clothes and everything and all humorous extending the rental car from a pickup at noon to pick up earlier in the day at 1 a.m came at no extra cost free car for eight hours wow that's pretty cool um i will say this mark um when i was looking at the app at alamo um they didn't have any at the airport and everything but then that same day when i was looking they had them at the walt disney world car care center and they had a manager special for that day for the full five days that I was there. I could have rented the car for less than $250 for those days, which was way cheaper than the six, $700 I was quote, quoted. But then I wasn't really thinking like, okay, how am I going to get to the car care center? Because yeah, I could have probably walked the Magic Kingdom parking lot and that, but that car care center is further than you think off of the, the Magic Kingdom parking lot. And, I, and I, after I decided not to do it, I was like, gee, I could have taken a lift and they could have dropped me off right there. Because I don't know if they, they normally have a shuttle there that will take you somewhere and everything. But I only seen it parked there most of the time when I was on the bus going by the car care center. So I don't know if they were using the shuttle or not. Yeah, it was. It was a manager special. And after I didn't do it, and then I 
but later in the day i was like oh i should check and it was gone they they didn't have any more cars that day and then i checked it again for the next day and they didn't have any cars at all so i was like ah darn um i didn't really need the car in a way but in another way i would have done some different things had i had the car um than just what i done because i pretty much was I'm not saying I was stuck on property. I could have taken a Lyft or an Uber or something like that if I wanted to go somewhere. But um, I wanted to possibly go visit my cousin at their house, which was a lot further from the Disney property and taking a Lyft and Uber out into the regular um, area. They live on the Kissimmee side of um, the Disney property area. Don't most people call Uber, Donna? <laughs> Uh, she was probably busy and everything. So, yeah. Um, and then to go visit Jeff and Angela and possibly Ross or even go visit Mike Wheeler. I know he lives a lot further from the Disney property and that, but I am familiar with the area. <laughs> we can't lift the Uber with Wally. Yes, that that that's the whole big thing with a lot of people because of the car seats and stuff why they don't use a lot of those um different car services and everything so that that's understandable but mine was mainly because i wanted to visit possibly visit my cousin and everything which i didn't get to do or, and we were talking about um going to my niece and i talking about going to universal or i was going to go with my cousin um she probably would have picked me up if i would have said hey yeah look, you want to go to sea world or universal hello billy welcome in thank you for joining mark made for us pick you up <laughs> yeah i almost called uber russ <laughs> i, I would have paid him for the gas and everything but once i dropped my um stuff off changed my clothes i went to the front of the resort hopped the magic kingdom bus um i knew kenzie was live so I was able to follow and see where they were and just trying to get there, but also enjoying the atmosphere, walking down Main Street and looking around. <laughs> and um, and then um, Angela texted me and said, hey, we're over by Tomorrowland. I knew Kenji and then we're in the, I think they were in the Carousel Progress or on Buzz Lightyear, one of those places. And Jeff and Ann said, we're going to go live soon because they were going to be ending. And they were over in Tomorrowland. And I said, okay. So I start walking that way. And um, I could see where Jeff and Ann were. And I thought, I'll just wait at the end of the bridge. Because they were coming to the bridge where Tomorrowland was. And um, came over. And I, it kind of people kind of cut in front of me and everything like that. Chad, we are being a distraction to even be good. <laughs> no problem. Hello, it's Joey's World. Lisa, Keith, and Joey. Welcome in. Thank you for joining. Um, and I was going to go up and just say, hey, are you Kenzie Days and you Tracy Glenn? And see if they recognize me. But I, Tracy had seen me, but he, he, he kind of already knew that I was there. But, but Kenzie did not know that I was there. And it was great to meet Kenzie and Matt. They were pretty excited. Um, that, well, everyone was pretty excited that I had come down. And um, it was just fun to see their excitement and even, you know, seeing Matt's excitement for um, his first trip and everything. He really had a great time and, and he was keeping a list of all his favorite things and all the different things that he was doing and, and everything like that. So, yes. It was it was really great. Welcome in, Cherie, Surfer Girl. Thank you for joining. Yeah, Angela can't keep a secret. I I when she texted me about that, when you guys I had forgotten that you guys were planning to um to do the um I can't think of what they call that now Disney bounding and she texted me about hey do you want to be Christopher Robin? I thought she must have told them and I wondered about that. And then I just figured out ah, whatever. And um, and I said, okay, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll do that. And then I was trying to look up Christopher Robin, but the only picture I could find was like he had a red vest on and everything. And then when she 
um, said, no, a yellow shirt and blue. And I'm like, okay, I have a yellow shirt that works out and I have blue shirt. We were so excited to see you. And yes, it was fun hanging out with you and Tracy and, and Kenzie and Matt at the Magic Kingdom and having lunch, like the late lunch and everything. And also hanging out with you and Tracy, walking around World Showcase and Epcot and, and Oliver and Grogu. So that was fun. And it was fun hanging with Jeff and Angela and Zach and Abby during the day too at different points. But um, so yeah, the Magic Kingdom, we, we did a few things, a few rides together, um, did the um, Jungle Cruise where they put in some of the new scenes and different things like that, Big Thunder Mountain. They rode it twice. Um, I only wrote it the once just because I needed a bio break at that point and, and everything. Welcome in, Ryan, Captain Akron. Thank you for joining. And, um, and so we did Big Thunder Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean. There was also um, the Jungle Cruise. Um, we did the TTA and a few other things. And um, Tracy and I did the carousel while they did uh, on at mansion. So um, John, I, I really do like the Skyliner. Um, I got the ride it in 2019. I had stayed at Pop Century right after it first opened and um, in December 2019. And I will say that I, that whole trip practically, I hardly rode a bus except to go to the Magic Kingdom and I went to Animal Kingdom one day. But most of the time I rode the Skyliner. Um, I don't mind it. It, it. And I will say if you are staying at Pop Century, Caribbean, the Caribbean Beach and the Riviera, they do not offer uh, bus service to Epcot or the Skyline, um, Hollywood Studios unless for, for some reason the Skyliner is down because of weather or some other technical difficulties. So just so you know that, um, they may run a bus if it's crowded or I'm not sure, but the whole time I was there, I did not see bus service. So you may want to ask about that, especially if you're not someone who really wants to ride the Skyliner because you're not a height person. You don't like to be up in the sky or or maybe that type of transportation just scares you in general, you know, and, and everything. But it runs smooth. I felt like it goes fast. Um, I will say, you know, when the, if you want to, um, I know from Pop Century, the, the Skyliner line since Hollywood Studios opens at nine, it started running at eight. And people do line up earlier. And then when you get over to, um, the Caribbean beach, you have to transfer and get into the line for um, Hollywood Studios. It does get lined up. Um, luckily, by the time I got over to Caribbean beach, it wasn't as lined up as I seen it, but they were also social distancing back then where they were going down into the property of um, the Caribbean beach to get, you know, because everybody had to stand. Um, I will say now for me going back at this time, if I was back at regular time, um, yeah, you had to wear masks on the Disney transportation. The only transportation that I did not see anybody have wear masks and there was no signs was the boats. So if you're taking the ferry boats, um, it didn't seem like you had to wear a mask unless you want to, that's your choice. Um, they will run the buses, but depends on the time of day. There is supposed to be at least one bus running all day but you will have to wait a long time for it. Okay, bros. Yeah, I wasn't sure. For me, I hopped the Skyliner. It, um, it's actually closer to the entrance to Hollywood Studios, plus you're at the back entrance of Epcot. And they do post the signs, so um, make sure you pay attention to that, especially uh, for your trip back to your room or to your hotel, because they only, like for Epcot, they ended at 11 p.m. And um, Hollywood with studios um it was around 9 9 30 p.m because i know one night um they were asking people you're going back to hollywood studios because they wanted to move you up into the line before the line closed so just so you know that um and usually the buses run an hour after 
But on the buses and the Skyliner, you needed um, a mask on. Um, I was on the one ferry boat to Epcot and nobody had a mask on. I didn't see any sign saying that you had to wear a mask, but that's your choice, you know, if you're wearing a mask or not. So I'm not going to judge anyone or whatever. So, and the lines and the way they were seating you on things, because there were sometimes I had the whole Skyliner to myself. It just depended on the crowds. And sometimes I shared it with a couple other people, not too many people, at least whenever I was on it, it wasn't like a full house. There might've been myself and three or four other people, but that was it. Um, so just to let you know, for me, it was like going back to Disney normally, except for the mass for the bus rides and the um, Skyliner rides. And then from the time I left the Pittsburgh air, from the time I went into the Pittsburgh airport to leaving the Orlando airport, and being on Magical Express, you needed a mask on. So just so you know that, you need that for your airline and all the way through. So so I didn't really take my mask off till I got to my resort and my room and and everything. So just to let you know that on there. And also for some of you, um, I noticed, and I don't know if it's because of the employees or hours, um, I sort of was hoping to go into the Disney store at the airport. And when I did get to the airport, it was about 6 p.m. The Disney store closed early. So um, I just like to look around. I wasn't looking for anything particular. I thought, you know, just something to pass time with. So a lot of the stores at the airport did close early or maybe they didn't open at all because I noticed the SeaWorld store was closed and the Disney store was closed. Universal mm -hmm. still had their store open. And there was a couple other shops. And then that also goes with some of the food locations at the food court or on the air side. They have a couple food areas open also, just so you know that. I didn't see any signs posted for buses or Skyliner the other day, but CMs were asking people to wear them. Um, yeah, at the resort, they actually had signs at Pop Century. And they did have people asking because I know the one day... Um, a lady didn't have her mask out and everything, and they had a box and handed her one. So they weren't going to let her on the um, bus until she put on a mask. So, you know, they could be changing that at any moment. But I think a lot of it has to do with the government, with the transportation, is why you have to wear a mask on their transportation. So that's why I'm guessing on that. So, But I, I will say I, I told Ange, I got on the bus for the boardwalk because I was going to Epcot to meet them and it's easier walking back to the through the International Gateway to where I was going. And I got on the boardwalk bus, got all the way to the back, was sitting there and about halfway through, I looked up and I'm like, oh, I don't have my mask on. And I did put it back on. I did put it on, but I was way in the back. The driver didn't really see it. Plus, nobody really was around me. But but that was the only time that I was like, oh, I forgot to put on the mask and the driver didn't say anything, but it wasn't something I did intentionally. It was just, I got on and was just concentrating on like, okay, I'm getting Epcot after I get off the bus at the boardwalk. So, so that, that's a thing. If you, I was going to meet um, Jeff and Ange and a few other people at the American theater. Um, I was at the magic kingdom. I just met Walt and Melissa and, Karen Cook was there. And um, so I thought that would be the easiest because they don't have the monorail to Epcot from the TTC to Epcot from the Magic Kingdom running yet. Uh, I did miss that. I did uh, wanting to ride the monorail. Um, I did ride the monorail the one day uh, from the Magic Kingdom over to the Contemporary Resort just because I for time reasons and stuff like that. Welcome in Penguin Master. Thank you for joining. But um, but yeah, it, it um, there's a few things that you kind of miss it, it, during this time too that hasn't reopened yet or or anything. So I'm hoping they'll get that Epcot line um, going for for the monorail because it, it was always a nice line, the ride and everything. And I just wonder when they'll open that back up. Probably they might wait until they're done with the construction. I, I mean, I don't know. A lot of the Disney insiders, you always, they'll probably come out and say, okay, 
okay, the Epcot line's winning or whatever. So that could be a reason why they don't have it running either, not only because of less employees and stuff, but, um, you know, it could be because they don't want people seeing what's going on down below at Epcot since it goes through there. Um, but that was my, I'm sorry, that was my Thursday. Friday, um, I slept in and kind of got rested just because I was up all day and stayed up late. And then I went over to Epcot. Um, I met Billy and Tracy and we did um, the Imagination Ride, Living with the Land. We did Spaceship Birth, um, then Finding Nemo Ride. And we got some pictures taken. And then we um, walked back through to the World Showcase. Um, I decided I was going to have some lunch. Um, and I said, well, me are going to go to Mexico or the fish and chips. And I decided... I, it was a good choice to take the fish and chips because when we went over by the Mexican Pavilion later, it was packed in those lines for the the for their food stations and everything like that. So I was glad. I said, "Well, let's get the fish and chips." And Tracy seemed interested, and um, you know, and so that's where we went to the fish and sh chips shop. Um, we did post pictures on our Instagram and everything. Um, I know it kind of gets. You know, if you are from the UK and stuff, yeah, they're probably not the greatest fish and chips. But for me, they satisfy the hunger. And I do like fish and chips. I've had UK fish and chips before. Um, I'm not going to say, you know, admit like, oh, yeah, they're better or whatever. For me, I really, you know, unless I'm eating UK fish and chips all the time, I probably, I didn't really notice too much of a difference. But there probably is some type of difference. But um but they were delicious and they hit the spot and then we continued on through the world showcase shopping at a few sh stores. Um, I will say if you're looking for certain things, especially the snacks, uh, we went into the Japan pavilion and their snack area is getting smaller and smaller. Um, and they're not getting in new snacks and stuff like that. And I also heard in the tea shop, they don't even have any of the English snacks the UK snacks that they normally have, like the cookies or the chocolates. They just have a lot of tea items and stuff like that. Just so you know, if you're looking now, who knows, maybe Disney will get a new stock here coming. I don't know why they're not restocking some of the things, but from, I have seen the Japan Pavilion store um, where the snack area, it's been completely filled with sodas and, all kinds of different stuff, but they kept condensing it down. And so just so you're aware of that and, and you're coming into some future trips there and stuff, supply chain still messed up, but yeah, it must be. Um, so I'm not sure why, but I know like at the UK, they just had teas. They didn't have any of their um, like candy type of item um, in Japan. It was getting smaller and everything. Now at the caramel shop, they seem to have some of the, they, they had that fully open with the Werther stuff and you can get the caramel popcorn and pre-bagged caramel popcorn that Werther's makes and then the fresh caramel popcorn that they make. And then I did see some caramels in the case, like the apples and stuff. So um, just so you, you're aware of that now, um, like the Canadian Pavilion, they have a little cart that has some of the things that they sell. I was a little disappointed that they didn't have some of the snacks because there is a maple um, mint tin and they're kind of like maple. I want to say they're, they're probably mints, but they're maple flavor. And I, I bought them one time because my nephews are really like them. And I thought I'm going to taste them. If I don't like them, I know that they'll eat them. And I ended up liking them. Welcome in Lori French. Thank you for joining and you can't get them right now because the store in Canada is closed. But they did have like a little car and they had some things that looked like that they sold in that store. But it was a little disappointing that they didn't bring out some of those snacks or whatever. But they probably didn't have them there. Um, I will say that they are training a lot of the college program kids because the first wave of them had moved in during the last two weeks. And there were a lot of people getting trained when I was at certain stores and certain um, rides and and stuff. Welcome in, Lori Jean Carlson. Thank you for joining. 
so my Friday was at Epcot. Um, and I was there most of the day. Um, I was with Billy and Tracy. Um, we were wandering around and then Jeff and Angela and the kids came over. We wrote the three caballeros. Um, that's when Jeff went live and everything. And it was at a time where um, I was going to meet a relative because they were getting off work and they got a pass to Epcot. And I wanted to go kind of rest somewhere rather than go back to my room or anything. So I walked out with Tracy and Billy because they were getting ready to um, head out themselves so they could make their trek back home. And um, I, I went and sat inside the Epcot Center where they had like the um, Epcot Forever and talked about all the future stuff of Epcot that right now it looks like they're foraging ahead with some things, but I don't think all of it will be there yet. But um, so I waited there and then when they said that they were getting ready to park and that, I moved up to the front of the park. Um, and then when they got there, we went on Spaceship Earth. The funny thing that happened is I was getting into the Spaceship Earth thing and you know how they have the languages and what my backpack chose for us. And we ended up having the Asian version on the Spaceship Earth, which is fine because we've ridden it many times and everything like that. But I was like, oh, I can't believe that happened my backpack hit the hit the the screen right as they were putting up the touch things so i was like okay and, um but it was fun anyway and then we did um food around the world and looked in some shops and stuff like that and then i headed out to the magic kingdom for a little bit um on friday evening and just kind of enjoyed the atmosphere and rode to tta and then it was time to leave anyway because it was only open till 9 p.m. and I had gone into the the Emporium earlier and everything like that. So, um, but it was a long, pretty much day. I have always wanted to do Spaceship Earth in another language. Yeah. Um, well, I've been on it so many times, I guess. And right at that point, we couldn't even change it. So it was like, okay, it was interesting. You don't get um, Dame, Dame Judy Dench, though. You get just the interpreter voice or whatever. I know a couple other people have had the Spanish or Portugal versions, you know, for fun or whatever. But if you really want to listen to it, just be careful. And um, especially if you haven't been on it, make sure you hit the English or whatever language that you know. So, so it wasn't too bad. It was just something to cool off and just enjoy anyway. <laughs> Long day for myself at that point and my relatives. So, um, so we walked around the world, tasted some foods. And uh, the first thing I had done in, earlier in the day is I bought the, um, they had that scavenger hunt. And I had bought two of them because I wasn't sure if my relative wanted the, um, one of the mugs or not. Because sometimes they do them and sometimes they don't. But um, the cast members really only started getting released to go back into the parks recently. And and so they hadn't been able to do some of the food and the flower and garden festival um, unless they bought a, a regular ticket themselves or if they had an annual pass. So, um, so I bought two of the things for the scavenger hunt um, and I let them choose what cup they wanted. And then I, I took one of the cups and, I was either going to get, well, I was going to choose the figment or the orange bird anyway. Um, and um, so I picked the, they took the figment one and I picked the orange bird. I, I only picked the orange bird because a lot of times they don't have merchandise with my orange bird and it's a little rarer. I do love figment. So um, I let them choose what they wanted to get. And, um, and I chose the orange bird and everything. Um, to answer your question, Mark, it's not too bad. You do kind of go, um, if you go the one way, it seems more direct through the construction, but if you go to the left side, going towards test track and that, that's a little more curvier to go around the construction. Um, yes, Mark, they did seem to have a lot of them. Um, I, we, when I went to the International Gateway, I bought my scavenger hunt thing and I saw all the different mugs, but I was going to go ahead and just say, can I have the mugs now? Because 
I don't know if we'll do the whole scavenger hunt or not. And then I decided, no, I'll wait, because I wanted them to choose if they wanted one, because if they didn't want it, then I would have just taken the orange bird and the figment both home. And then they just, they said, yeah, I'll take one or whatever. So I let them choose. But um, at the International Gateway, which is off to like the right hand side, after you pass the British, the UK, United Kingdom area, um, at that gift shop, they had a lot of them. We turned in our stuff right at the World Showcase. There's like two different stores and one is like the festival like store and everything. And they had a stack of them too. Um, I didn't notice, I think they had another place up front at the pin shop or, or the other gift shop, whether they had them or not. Cause I didn't, I think that's what she told me, but I didn't notice what they had up front, but I would think up front, they might not have as much of variety because those stores seem to get busier there because when you first walk in, people are looking at things or on your way out. Um, I think you could also turn it in at Mouse Gears, but I didn't really look there to see what they had, um, if they had these or not at that time when I was going through Mouse Gear. Um, but they did seem to have a lot of these. And I'm sure though, once they start the Food and Wine Festival, you'll probably find these in the Character Warehouse or Cast Connections or wherever. But it's a plastic one and it's kind of nice inside and, and everything. So it'll be good to hold water or something. But they had Orange Bird, Figment, I think Minnie Mouse, and I can't remember what the other one was. Oh, Spike the Bee. Spike the Bee. I probably, yeah, Figment and Orange Bird would have been the ones I would have probably taken home had I gotten both, got to keep both of them. Um, some of the other merchandise I got, I'll show some of the things. Um, they had, um, Pez, they were buy one, get one free. Um, so I bought, I got this at Hollywood studios, but they were all over property where they were buy one, get one free of the Pez. Um, the one true might wait for the character warehouse. We were there for the last few days of the flower vessel. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to get to the character warehouse. I had thought about it at one point and I wasn't sure. And I know, you, I think you could check in online and stuff, but I just never talked about, I just never really looked. And a couple of times that I looked, they had a temporary shutdown probably because they were full. And I did talk to a couple of people that went and they, they saw some things, but really didn't. I, if I had a car and stuff, I might've went to the one that's further away by Universal. Welcome in, Daniel, this infinity. Sorry if I missed anybody. But they did have the Pez, um, buy one, get one free. So I picked the Alien and Slinky Dog. Um, one of the things I really wanted to get, and I forgot to grab it on my way leaving, um, was one of those monorail holders where you hold the Pez. But I'll pick up one at some point because I do plan to be back down at Disney World. Um, so in the fall, so... I'll probably get it. It's kind of cute. You put your Pez in there and, and everything like that. So, um, so I picked Slinky Dog and the Alien because it was Hollywood Studios and, and it was right around the Toy Story area. So, um, and I have like Mickey Mouse and stuff from other times. So they're a little bit different. Um, one of the things I also did pick up um, some Goofy's candy. I really like the strawberry licorice wheels. Um, it's in the Woody ba Woody's bag. Um, they do have variety of stuff. I forgot to pick up my Goofy's candy of the, um, the variety sour balls. Those little sour balls. Are, you know, I forgot to grab a bag of them. I remembered after I got on the plane on the Magical Express, but then that's probably what I would have bought at the Disney store at the airport, but since it was closed, I figured, oh, well, um, that's okay. I didn't really need them. Um, some of you have seen my picture on Instagram. I was able to, um, we got into Gideon's Bakery. It only took us a half hour. We put our name in and went to lunch at the boathouse. You have a sweet tooth, baby. Yes. Yeah, they, the liquory show is one of my favorites, so. And they didn't have the crazy bananas anywhere. Um, none of those um, 
where you now maybe at the Goofy's Candy Company in Disney Springs, but I didn't get a chance to get there. Whether they had the type where you can pull your own candy out and do that, but they didn't have it on the boardwalk and or in Hollywood Studios where I normally get it. I like that crazy bananas um, candy stuff. And then this is like um, the Japanese candy I found. Uh, but like I said, their selection was pretty low on the totem pool of candy. I did buy this and then I bought the high chews banana flavor because I've never seen the banana flavor ones around my area. That's a lot of times um, just the sour fruit or tropical fruit and stuff. One of the other items I picked up was this Darth Vader Stein. Um, I picked that up at Hollywood Studios at, the, at one of the, when I went to the Backlot Express. Um, you order it and you get a Coke with it. So um, you can put it in your cup or whatever, but I didn't use it for that because I'm using this as a, I would like a totem pool of candy. <laughs> yeah. But um, this is pretty cool. I had to blame Ron and Meredith when I saw their thing, but I knew this this will be a gift for someone. Um, so it's pretty neat little Stein, and they like Star Wars. So that was one of their items. Um, I picked up a few shirts. So most of them are gifts for people. But um, this is one of the shirts that has all like the Disney ears on them. So that's um, the, that particular one. <clears throat> and, and I picked up this yellow one. For a gift for someone, because I actually got the Wally well, loves his Darth Vader helmet sign. Yes, um, I got this one also, but not in this color. I got the green teal one, but um, a lot of people seem to have this on, and I bought this as a gift for someone. They like yellow. Um, myself, I was looking for this other yellow shirt, but they didn't really have their size. Um, it was a flower and garden one, but. A lot of that merchandise, um, I'm sure, is pretty much picked over and they really don't have whatever was out there is out there because I believe it ends in about um, two weeks, two, maybe three weeks, and then they're going to start moving in the food and wine stuff. And then um, I picked this shirt up for another gift too. But it's kind of an original plain type of one. I had to eat start over. <laughs> That's a gift also. Um, <clears throat> quite honestly, I will say for myself, I didn't really buy too much. Um, I did buy some things, but this is probably like the lowest that I've ever um, bought anything the whole time I was there. I used gift cards that I had. Of course, I forgot um, the one part from my Disney credit card, all the point card I left at home, but that'll be used for a future trip. But I use a lot of gift cards and stuff. But this is a shirt um, for someone. This is for my dad. Um, so he kind of likes something plain. And this is kind of like an original um, type of um, shirt there. I'll show a couple of things there, Candy Mom, after I'm done going through. But um, I picked up that shirt, um, the orange bird um, thing from the scavenger hunt. If, you ha if you're an annual pass holder and I think a DVC member, you get a discount off of that. So just remember that if you are asked about the discounts. Um, so, so they're kind of nice for the price and everything like that. And you could have a good time doing the scavenger hunt. And I'm sure they'll have something new for food and wine festival. Um, but we also got a figment one, but my friend kept that one. Yeah, um, my, my relative kept the figment one. So 
with that, I bought Pez because they were buy one, get one free. Um, I bought this shirt. I also have, I got the teal one, um, the yellow one. And then I got this one also for a gift for, for one, one of my relatives. And it has all the ears. I thought that was kind of cute and that'll fit their personality and stuff. I did buy pens. It'll be interesting to see uh, what I did with them. Because I usually stick all the bags inside the bags. Um, I decided to buy, um, I know when my nephews were younger, I all, they always bought the buses and the different cars and different things like that. Yeah, the pink shirt was really cool. I, was, I found the size for that person at my resort and whenever I got back to my resort to get ready to go back to the airport. Um, so I got lucky there because everywhere you looked it, like the shirts, especially at the Emporium. Um, I know right now it's kind of stinks that you, if you buy something in the day, you're stuck carrying it all day long, but you never know. It might not be there by the evening because a lot of those shirts were pretty well picked over and they didn't have the sizes and stuff. So just to let you know, if they are going to a little one, watch out, the tires come off. Now, these are actually for my collection, Mark. Um, but yeah, I can understand that. Um, my nephews, every time we went to Disney, they would get the buses or the, the trucks or whatever or the things. One of the reasons why I bought the buses is um, those Magical Express buses, um, since that's going away as far as the magical express and mirrors has taken over i will say um on the way to disney i rode an actual magical express bus but on the way home i was on a completely different style bus but a mirrors bus driver which they um are that's who drove those buses anyway the magical express and and stuff was mirrors but they were using regular buses along with the different cruise lines and, and stuff like that. So well, that's one of the reasons why I picked up the um, this set because the Magical Express, if, you know, who knows what Disney's gonna do later on about, about that. Uh, I'm guessing you're gonna just have to call Mears or rent a car or call some other private service. Yeah, we should probably buy him new ones for collector's items, yeah. We gave them to Wally. We gave him the Wally -E and the tires. Yeah, I, I could see that doing it. Now I wish she didn't open her bus box. Hey, Candy Mom, you know tons of people that are down there. I'm sure they could pick you up some more buses or whatever. But that's the reason why I decided to pick them up because I thought, well, my nephews already have the buses. And, um, and I figured, well, I'm going to put this in my uh, Disney... Um, cabinet and they'll be there for that because you know that's the transportation buses and of course they change and paint them around um, the cruise line buses I'm sure they're still going to use them and I'm sure there'll be magical express buses around but if Disney's not going to have the magical express around I'm sure they're going to have to get repainted whoever owns those buses they'll probably repaint them so on our first trip 20 plus years ago, prior to Disney ME, we always had to coordinate with Mirror, so it will likely go back to that. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing, Mark. Um, and I'm sure they'll keep it kind of streamlined like they like they have anyway, as far as like the resorts and stuff like that. Because I know every time I was on the Pop Century bus, we would go to our animation, Pop Century, and sometimes they may have another resort depending on how many people and how they have the lines. Um, when I got there that morning, Magical Express lines were low and they started just combining some of the resorts in the area. So that wasn't too bad. But that's one of the reasons why I picked up the buses for a collector's item. <laughs> um, then I noticed in the Galaxy's Edge, I do have an R2-D2. And... I noticed on the wall that you could buy the heads for the other pieces that could go and you can interchange them. 
So I picked up the R5 head. Um, they may still use the buses for the cruise line transportation. Yes, that's what I would expect to. Yeah, right. We all know Amy has hot with us tracks. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I picked up the R5 head and that way I can interchange my R2 head and, um, and make an R5 if I decide I want to do that. Um, and they, they had BB-8 and they also have other R2-D2 colors and stuff, but like all the other colors that they had, I was hoping they would have had the clear with a blue, but they only had like the clear with the orange um, head. I didn't really ask if they had it with the blue, but when I saw the R5, I thought, oh, that would be cool to get the R5 because R5 drives the ride at um, Rise of the Resistance. Amy, did we ever get the chip? Um, no, I never bought any of the personality chips. Uh, I try to listen to them, and they're hard to hear there. And so it, it, it's kind of hard for me to decide if that's what I want to get or which one I want to get to have them. So, no, I never got an extra um, chip for And I was trying to listen to them to this time, but it, the store was really crowded at that point. And it's hard to listen to them and stuff. Uh, maybe eventually I'll buy a personality chip or another one. <clears throat> Jawas would pay premium for the quality head. Wally's has a chip. It sounds evil. <laughs> I got three, only needed two. Ah, yeah, it's, yeah, they had those heads too. Buy three for a certain price. And I do remember seeing the chips like at a certain price and everything. Um, since I have an annual pass and that, and that. They, I did get a discount off of the head, so it really didn't bother me not buying three heads, which I didn't really need anyway. If the droids were better built and did more things, I think they would be worth the price, but I don't think they are quite worth it for me. Yeah, that's understandable, Russ, and I, I can understand your 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 plea because that's just like, you know, I would love tons of people were doing the lightsabers. Yeah, I would love to own one of those lightsabers, but they don't seem to hold out very well. As we know, Zach has changed his in, but he's actually using it like a real lightsaber a lot of times. And and I could see that, yeah, they're probably not made for that. But for that price, they should be made pretty sturdy that you're not, if you're shaking it around. And I've seen people in the parks with them. Welcome in, Danny. Thank you for joining. Um, they should stand up to that. So I don't know. Um they did raise the prices, though, of doing that experience, but it didn't seem to discourage the people that were getting those um, lightsabers. I did see a lot of them. I wanted to go into Doc Ondors, but every time I went by, the line just kept growing, and it was really long and everything. Russ, owning one, you're 100% right, not worth it. Paid for the experience, Wally, loved it. Yeah, I, I, could, I could say that too, Mark. I run mine every once in a while, and he'll talk, and stuff like that, but doesn't do as much as what you would hope that you could do, let it do or whatever. But, but it was just all in fun. And, and I did it and that was it. And I did that back whenever it was a, a annual pass preview for galaxy's edge. So, um, that was one and done for me. And yeah, I would love to get the, one of the lightsabers, but I'll probably look around at the comic cons and stuff. And I know, um, some other YouTubers who, Love the Star Wars have given me names of different um, people who do the um, lightsaber companies. Um, I know ones like Vader's Vault and stuff that are at the Comic Cons. And I know Orlando, I, I don't know if they'll have it this year or if they did, but they usually have a very big Comic Con in the springtime that I know a few um, people go to and check it out and they do have people that sell lightsabers and stuff there and check that out um this might be my pins yeah i think that is oh no these are the mint tins um these were buy one get one free also um T. Marie, she really likes the mints and everything like that. I hurried up and texted her because I was getting ready. I had about a, about 45 minutes before getting on Magical Express. And luckily, 
she did get back to me before it was almost time. And um, I said to her, hey, they have buy one, get one free mints. I sent pictures. Um, these are Star Wars ones. BB-8 is orange flavored mint. Um, the TIE Fighter is cinnamon flavored mint. And then they do have a Millennium Falcon. I bought all three. I got Team Marie, the BB-8, and because that's the one she told me that she wanted. And I got the Millennium Falcon. That's peppermint inside here. Oh, okay, Russ. That's what I was wondering. They usually have a big thing. Welcome in England, Portugal, William. Um, I bought my dog a, a dog collar. Um, I, yeah, she loves the orange ones. I got her some of those when they first came out. Yeah. Um, I might be asking you about them too, but. If I get back down, I'm definitely going to buy more of the orange one. Now you're not too late. I'm still going on with the merchandise, and you can always rewind. Um, I bought my dog a dog collar. Um, I got this at the Contemporary Resort, and um, I probably kind of wish now I would have looked at the racks a little more at, at Disney Springs. And that. Um, I got her a green one just because they only had, like, a green and a purple, and then there was, like, one that was more boyish and I grabbed the green. So, but it's reflective and everything. it'll fit her. And then eventually I can get another one whenever I take a better look at them. Um, I didn't notice if they had pink ones. They probably did at the bigger stores and everything. But uh, at that point I could just reach the green and um, I didn't think purple would really be good for her. I can't find my pen. That's the only thing I'm missing. Um, I did pick up a pin at Gideon's Bakery. So I got one of the bat pins from Gideon's. Um, and I also got my niece a sticker um, from there. She wanted the sticker. And then we bought three cookies. I bought a chocolate chip, peanut butter, and she got the chocolate chip. Um, they also have cakes and stuff there. Um, I actually wrapped mine up real good and packed mine to bring home. They survived, as you can see on um, Instagram. And I cut them up into fours last night. And I think there's a couple pieces left. And I will say they are really delicious. I'm glad I cut it up into four pieces, but I was going to share them with my parents anyway because it's just too much for one person to eat. I think you... If, if I ate that whole cookie, I think I would have been sick because it was, it, I mean, they're delicious, but they're really thick and they're heavy. So I bought two cookies and I actually bought three cookies and then a pin and a sticker of the bat. Yeah, I can't seem to find my pins, but I bought two window pins um, that they had available. Um, I looked at all the different pins and there are a few different ones, like the Hunchback of Notre Dame had their anniversary pins. Welcome in, Randy and Kathy. Welcome in. Thank you for joining. I was just showing the rest of my merchandise from my trip and um, everything. So I bought those. I'm not sure which bag or where they ended up whenever I was packing. I did pick up a couple different candies at the airport. Um, like the coconuts, and then I picked these up, chocolate alligators for some friends that live back here, and alligator gummies. Not sure what they taste like, but they look kind of yummy, so, and I like gummy, so we'll see. Not sure where my pins were, but that'll be for another stream, I guess. I'm sure they're around. I can't seem to find them right now. They're probably at the bottom of the bag. I love the pistachio cookie and the spaghetti, uh, the spaghetti tails from, okay, from the Vivo Gelato. Okay. Um, yeah, I had, um, I did try the gelato at, um, at Epcot in the Italian pavilion. I got to try the chocolate and I got a cherry flavored, um, my niece got the um, cookies and cream, and I think she got ch chocolate. I, I think that was the other flavor, but I can't remember. But And also cookies and cream. 
because we did the two scoops in a cup. And then I tried gelato at the Riviera. Whenever I went to eat there, I got the flatbread pizza at the Riviera um, quick service because um, I wanted to go check out the Riviera and look around and everything. And um, that was pretty good. Um, some of the food places I ate at was the um, Crystal Palace. I had the fried chicken there. Um, they didn't have the characters there, but we had the fried chicken dinner. Um, I also tried um, the place at the um, Riviera. I can't remember the name of it, but at the Piata place. It was their quick service place. Um, I did have quick service one time at Pop Century just because I was on a break and just kind of going through and thought, oh, I'll just eat here. That way I don't have to worry about eating anywhere else. Um, and just tried food around the world at Epcot. So that was pretty much it. Um, I did have a lot of fun. Um, I did do a few live streams on Saturday. Um, I did um, a live stream from Hollywood Studios and various videos. Um, I like the Mickey's Runaway Railway. Um, unfortunately, I wish that the great movie ride was still there and they would have put that somewhere else. But it was still a fun ride. It, it really, I was in a good seating position for the ride that whenever different scenes changed, I got to move right into those scenes and didn't miss part of it or half of it or whatever. Um, I got, I didn't get the rise of the resistance in the morning. It went boom. It was gone like instantly. But at one o'clock, I, um, I know a couple of people said to go by Indiana Jones and the Tower of Terror. So I went down by the Tower of Terror just because I was over that way taking a break. And um, I was able to get a um, pass at 1, 1 p.m. Um, they did have a delay opening for that. So I know a lot of people, I had number 92 for 1 p.m., which is kind of unusual for, for that um, time of day. But I guess since the delayed opening, maybe they didn't have as many um openings for the 7 a.m and then had a lot because even after i got mine walked on sunset boulevard there was a group of people that i walked past they just picked up the last bit of the passes at 1 p.m for for rise of the resistance and i didn't have to wait that long either for the rise of the resistance it was long enough for me to go over to the backlot express and take a break and have lunch and everything like that um, Garrett, um, there are times that I do understand, um, or I do enjoy going myself because there's times that I kind of put myself into like a mode of like, okay, I want to do this, this and that, and I want to go check out that. But then there are times that I do enjoy hanging out with people and, um, going with my family and saying, okay, let's go to Big Thunder or let's go have fun. So it's kind of a toss up there for me. Um, I do, there are times where um, it was like I had an agenda and I wanted to do certain things. But I will say I did have fun riding with um, Kenzie and all of them and Jeff and Angela and Zach and Abby and, and doing some things with them. So so it, yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of hard for me because I've gone to the parks a lot myself. So I get into that agenda mode, especially in the mornings. I, I want to try to get as much done and then move into that mode of like, okay, I, I might want to ride that again. Let's check the, the ride time or something like that. <laughs> I watch my phone strength to see where I got, the, yes. Um, that was one of the things too, Mark. Um, I was told by a few streamers and one of my friends was on the stream whenever I was at Hollywood Studios. They're the ones that said to go by Tower of Terror. I've also um, had Lisa, Keith, and Joey, and Billy, and Tracy say that, well, they were told to go by um, Indiana Jones area. And that's where you kind of pick up the best bars. I was over more towards Tower of Terror at that point because I went to Starbucks to get some water and and I was um, sitting and relaxing and then I moved down towards the Tower of Terror and I had I had a good three to four bars on my phone 
Welcome in, Jeff or Angela. This is our dreams. Thank you for joining. But um, that, and I got right in right away. So, so there there are some spots that I've heard where Cynthia was talking about by the Joffrey's Coffee, by Toy Story Land, by Tower of Terror. Um, I was outside the Tower of Terror area by where the Fantasmic Theater area was. Just because by the time I got to that point, it was getting close to the time. And I thought, well, if I get it, I get it. If not, um, if not, then I've written it four times on opening weekend. So, but that was like a year and a half ago. I wouldn't have been, I would have been disappointed at the time, but I also would have been, been like, okay, I've written it, but it's still disappointing. Um, so I'm not sure how I feel about how Disney handles those, um, those virtual queues and stuff like that, because with Rise of the Resistance, and especially right now, if you don't have a park pass for Hollywood Studios and you want to hop over to Hollywood Studios, you're not getting on Rise of the Resistance at all. And if that doesn't bother you, then that's fine. But, um, it's disappointing if you, if you don't even get a chance, get one of the, um, boarding passes because, you don't get the ride at all. There's no standby line. And I know some people are like, you know, you know, oh yeah, I'd rather them do virtual queues, but not the way that this is handled. Because if I was only going to Disney World once or twice in my lifetime, and this was a once in a lifetime trip, and I wanted the ride, Rise of the Resistance, and I might not get a boarding pass, I'm not going to get the ride. And they, they don't care if you go and complain and and stuff. Maybe they do end up if you really get angry and stuff that give you whatever. But, but I would be totally crushed. Yes, that that's true, Randy and Kathy. I would be totally crushed if you didn't get it, because who knows how many times you get down there. I'm lucky enough that I can still travel to Walt Disney World, welcome in Kelly, Mickey Bunch, and get the ride, Rise of the Resistance, and and maybe get that chance or, or whatever. So that that's the thing there but for somebody that only gets to go once or twice in their lifetime or you know not that often that's crushing if you can't get on that and i just wonder what the future will be with guardians of the galaxy and tron and ratatouille look at all those people that have the epcot pass for october 1st is that going to be a virtual thing and if you don't get in to Ratatouille that day? Are you going to be able to get the ride at it all? Or are they going to let it be an open standby line? You know, so that would be really crushing that you couldn't get into the Magic Kingdom. I mean, I know right now you probably can for October 1st, but you, at that point when you made your reservations, it wasn't available and you picked Epcot hoping to get on Ratatouille. And if you don't get that boarding pass that day, you wasted your park day. Not to say that you, I mean, they're going to have other things going on like harmonious and, and stuff like that going on, but that would be crushing if you didn't get on it. But if you live down there, I'm sure you're going to get on Ratatouille someday, you know, but for people that are only there for that week or that whatever, that's going to be hard. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do with fast passes and virtual queues and everything like that. Welcome in, Kelly and the Mickey Bunch. Um, I, th I think some of the disappointing thing for me, um, uh, yeah, that would be just disappointing. I didn't really have any disappointments, that, although the, it was hard to try to uh, meet up with some of um, the people that I had met before and wanted to because they were either weren't streaming in the parks that weekend because of the Father's Day weekend or maybe they couldn't get passes or whatever. So I wasn't able to meet up with them or they were in an opposite park and you can't park hard earlier than 2 p.m. And they might have been done live streaming at that time. And I know I could have Instagram them to see where they might have been or or not. So that would be um, that was the only disappointment because I know the day that I left and I really was hoping that they, he would have been streaming in the park, but I know it was his birthday and it was Father's Day weekend. And they probably had other plans. Is I saw Adventures of VP started streaming in Hollywood Studios. I was leaving um, Disney Springs at that point, and um, 
And I knew that I wouldn't have time to even get over to Epcot because by the time I got to ride past the um, Riviera, he was on the Skyliner already on his way to Epcot and everything like that. And um, I really would have liked to have met them, but I wouldn't have had time to get over to Epcot to say hello just because of the timing of um, the uh, Magical Express and getting my luggage and everything like that. So, um, but that was one person I would have loved to have met and I saw them in the parks and everything like that. But one of these days I'll catch VP and Mylene and them and hopefully Kelly and the Mickey bunch. But I did get to see Maria and Chris and say hello to Josh and Jenna and um, Walt and Melissa. Um, I decided to go over to the Magic Kingdom when I was at the Riviera, and I'm glad I did because then Walt went live and I was able to find him. And um, and so that was great to catch Walt and Melissa. Um, so that was another surprise there. So, um, And there was a couple other people that were in the parks, but I don't walk that fast to get to catch them. And, and then if their stream ended, I wasn't able to know where they were. So, <laughs> and some of the other friends, they weren't streaming yet because of the passes and, and rests and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I didn't get to meet the James Ryan. I know he was down around there. I was always in the opposite parks or he was elsewhere. So I didn't get to do that either. But hopefully one of these days, I mean, I do have plans to return at some point. So. But that was pretty much it, my trip, and that was pretty much all the merchandise, except I do have pins somewhere in a bag. Um, I know they got packed. It's just a matter of finding where the bag went to and where in the bag. But they were two window pins. I looked at a lot of the different window pins and didn't really... Um, buy any other pins there just because I have a lot of different ones and I'm I kind of just decided that I would collect just um if I'm there for festivals around the first couple days when they have the pins and stuff um rides or a resort that I stayed at I have all the window pins Main Street is my jam yeah I picked up um two of the newer ones that came out but I'm not sure where I put them. I know they got packed, but it's just a matter of me finding them. So I'll show them on another stream. I thought they might've been in this bag, but they're not. And they might be in my backpack because I was throwing different things in the different places and everything like that. So that's pretty much um, all I have today. Um, yeah, Saturday was my um, Hollywood Studios day. Um, I pretty much did a, everything at Hollywood Studios. And then I left Hollywood Studios to kind of take a break, uh, put my backpack down. I ran over to um, over to Epcot um, and saw the hooligans there. And um, that was a fun concert. And then on Sunday was my Animal Kingdom day. Um, and um, I did the Lion King show, the Safari, uh, Expedition Everest, um, and kind of walked around. And, and it, usually the Animal Kingdom Park, it always feels hotter than, than anything because I think of all the tr tropical stuff. I did get on Flight of Passage and the Navi River Journey, and that was pretty fun. I met up with Ange and Jeff at the front of the park. I know they had Tusker House for their breakfast because um, they had asked if I wanted to join them at that point. But I, not that I don't like Tusker House, I, I just had some things I wanted to do and, and everything like that. But I did meet up with them and spent some time with them at their um, home. I went back to their home and then they drove me back to my resort afterwards. And I met them later in the evening after I went over to the Magic Kingdom and found Walt and Melissa and everything and saw the hooligans again at um epcot so 
it was a fun evening and everything. Good evening, Timothy Rainwaters. Thank you for joining. But I do thank everyone who was on my live streams when I did go live. Um, so I do appreciate that. Um, I know it was a little harder during some of the time when, especially the weekends, um, I, I'm just getting comfortable in the parks using the gimbal and going live and stuff like that. So at some points it was like, okay, I'll just go around or whatever. There were a lot of people streaming on the weekends and everything. But I know Monday morning I had a nice crowd because nobody was really streaming. I was at the Magic Kingdom. Um, I was hoping to kind of do some more. Um, and hopefully I'll be more comfortable going on some of the rides. But by the time I went live, a lot of the ride lines were long and everything. But I did take you up into the Swiss Family Treehouse at the Winnie the Pooh ride and kind of walked around. I was hoping to get on the riverboat. And I kind of wasn't watching the time and missed the first sailing of it. Because you do get some good views of Tom Sawyer's Island and the Big Thunder Mountain and everything like that. Um, so, and after I ended the stream at the Winnie the Pooh ride, I did go on to um, the the mine train. That was my final ride for the day at the Magic Kingdom. And then I headed to Disney Springs for lunch at the Boathouse. Um, that was very delicious. Um, I it, I had the filet sliders and. My niece had the burger there. She's never really been there, so that was our choice. I had two places in mind that we would go um, to eat, and she picked the boathouse, which was a good choice. Very good. And we just sat at the bar, um, and that was fine for us. So when are you moving to Florida, Amy? <laughs> um, I will not be, at least for now, I won't be. Um, yeah, I, I, I would love to, but... I also know, and granted, I know people, when I said that in my stream or something, they were like, oh, don't worry, Steve doesn't have a job or whatever. But I know I need to have a job if I go to Florida and live there. But eventually, you never know, I might go there and live again. I did live there in the early 90s, and it would, it would be fun to live there. A lot of my family are back here, and since... Um, a lot of my medical team for my kidney transplant and stuff are here. Um, that's where I feel that I need to be. Although, yeah, it, it's getting hard to not want to not want to live there, but, um, we'll see. You never know. Um, so, but I know I would have to at least get a job or be in that retirement time and then shape to be walking the parks and everything like that. So. That would be the whole thing. So you never know, but I don't think it'll be anytime soon. There'll be lots of trips. So I do have um, plans for the 50th anniversary um, at that time. And then maybe I can squeeze in something um, before my annual passes run out. Um, but I'm also waiting to hear what they're going to do for Christmas time. So, so that would be the, um, the choices there. Yeah, those filet sliders were really good, um, Randy and Kathy. Um, I was pleasantly surprised there. And I know it was hard because I was like, oh, the lobster roll or or that. But I just went with that. So Steve doesn't even have a house. Yes, he doesn't even have a house either. <laughs> That's the thing, too. So um, I would probably pick an apartment or rent an apartment at, at first and then decide what to do there once I got there. So um, if I would decide to do that, but at this time, there's no plans to really do that for me. But, but I do have some trips planned. So um, that'll be up, up and coming. So, but that's about it the, for this evening. Um, I do thank everyone for joining. And um, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you are new to the chat, look at all our other videos and consider subscribing. And um, also, um, I look for some other videos. I do have a bunch of shorts there, but I'm going to be putting together some different videos. I do have one down from my first day of like a montage of pictures and some live videos that happened. So who would ever move from Pittsburgh to Orlando? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that was pretty much it for everything. Um, and if I find those pins, I'll show them on another stream or 
another time. So um, that, that's pretty much it. So I do um, hope you guys all have a great evening and I will see you in the chats and let the adventures begin. So have a great evening, everybody, and I will see you later. Bye.